Welcome to another episode of the photo department. I'm drinking some grapefruit seltzer because it's very refreshing and I already had two cups of coffee this morning, so no more coffee for me. A couple of things just right off the bat. I have a new Instagram account specifically for this YouTube channel. It's just at the photo department on Instagram. If you want to see previews of videos as they go up, um, channel specific news, stuff I share on this channel only, that's a good thing to follow. And if you want to follow my professional work and my personal work, I have a new Instagram as well, just at Christopher Michael Sturm instead of just Christopher Sturm. Um, my old Instagram had like 7,000 followers, but the engagement I was getting on my stuff was a lot lower. So I'm assuming it was a bunch of bots and people who don't really care about my work. So that account has gone goodbye. And I started a new account so that people who really actually care about the work that I'm doing and the stuff that I'm posting can uh, interact with me. And if you're a bot, then uh, no, thank you. <laughs> also, uh, I have started a podcast with a friend of mine called The Spooky Park Bench. If you want to hear what me and my friend Mike have to say, you can check out The Spooky Park Bench. The first episode will be out at some point in the near future. And as soon as that's all set up and ready to go, I'll let you guys know. But just know that sometime very, very soon, there will be the first episodes of The Spooky Park Bench. So if you're interested in that, maybe check it out. This is Lomography's Color Negative 800, part of their Color Negative line. Uh, they also have Color Negative 400, which I'm a big fan of. I think that these films are really great. They're a good alternative that's a little bit cheaper than the Portra line of Kodak films. They're really versatile. They have a great color palette. I really like the way they look. The film community has been theorizing what Kodak stock this film is made from because it's pretty well known that Lomography's film is just purchased from Kodak and re-spooled as their own product. They are not really disclosing what kinds of films they're using for their specific film stocks. So I think people have generally accepted that Lomo 400 is Ultramax. That's been cut to 120 and 35 millimeter. Whatever is in the Kodak fun saver cameras. Uh, these cameras come with an 800 speed film and it's 27 exposures. It's obviously spooled specifically for this purpose. But a lot of people think that it's the same film that Lomography is using for their 800 speed. I wanted to see how true this possibly could be. I decided to take the 35 millimeter Kodak Funsaver 800 film and the 800 Lomo in 120, take them out in some cameras, shoot them and see what they look like. Uh, I didn't have Lomo 800 in 35 millimeter, so I just shot it in 120 on my Mamiya RB67. I shot a roll of the Kodak Funsaver film in my Nikon F2 with the 55 millimeter 2.8 lens. I tried to keep it as close as possible so you can kind of get the idea, but it's not supposed to be a one-to-one -one scientific comparison. I just wanted to see if there is any weight to the assumption that these films are the same. I made plans to meet up with Baxter's dad, AKA Jason from Grainy Days at Leo Carrillo State Beach in Malibu. Met up with him and Caleb of Bad Flashes, brought my friend Hector with me, and we spent the day just grabbing photos of the beach and the park and the people there and the seagulls and the rocks and the cave that doesn't exist that Caleb insists in exists. It was in focus or some shit, I don't know. I don't know how to use this thing. Nothing matters. So we're out here. Having some performance issues. Oh, camera, sorry. Get in there, get in there, baby. Don't embarrass me in front of everyone. <laughs> I'm 
not getting crispy bangers. Can't relate. <laughs> I like to keep the tip out, you know what I mean? Yank that out of uh, the cartridge or the uh, disposable that you sent me? Yeah, this is from the uh, fun table. That's the stuff. That's the stuff that everyone. Uh, yeah. This is just some uh, Ultramax. Ultramax 400. I think it's gonna get too dark for this. I think this is actually made from uh, the Ultramax is actually cut from the Fuji Pro 400H stock. Looking at this film after scanning it, I've got to say, I can't make a definitive statement on whether or not this film is the same because I really truly do not know. I don't have the insider information, but what I can say is looking at the film, it does look very similar and they do seem to react to the same situations pretty much the same. There are a couple of things that made me think that this is indeed the same film. Uh, the first thing is handling the film, the thicknesses of the acetate backing of the film is exactly the same. They feel the same. Different films have different backing thicknesses. Codex Professional films have a little bit thicker of an acetate backing. Their consumer films are a little thinner, uh, which is true with the Kodak 800 and the Fun Saver, and also was true with the Lomo 800. Another film that has a very noticeable difference is the JCH Street Pan 400. That film is incredibly thin, curls like crazy, is kind of a nightmare to handle. So that's something that I kind of noted. Also, when taking the film uh, out of the tank after developing, the films looked identical. The color of the film was exactly the same. The emulsion looked the same. The only difference was the rebate on the uh, edges of the film were obviously going to be different. But other than that, they looked the same to my eye. There are some white balance color rendering differences between these two films just based on the um, reality of shooting medium format versus 35 millimeter and also the differences in the coatings on the lenses. So they're not going to be obviously one-to-one -one. and I didn't try to fix that because I didn't want to influence the way they looked at all. So these scans are pretty much just raw from the scanner and then converted to negative lab with a neutral profile and that was all I did to them. Like I said, I can't make a definitive statement because I can't just claim things to be true if I don't know if they really are or not. But any reasonable person shooting this film could probably conclude that 
if it's not the same film, it's damn close. All this to say is that, yeah, Lomo 800 is awesome. And so is Codex, whatever this fun Saver 800 stuff is. I guess that's one film mystery we can kind of put to bed. Uh, also, who cares? Just shoot the film. They're both great. Uh, if you do want to take the Kodak Fun Savers apart and get the film that's out of there and uh, use it in a different camera, there's a couple things you should know. Uh, the first thing is that the film is already wound out of the cassette into this camera and it winds it back into the cassette as you're shooting. So you need to open this up in a dark bag or uh, go into a dark room or under the sheets or whatever and then fire all the photos and then wind it up until it's done. Then you can open it up and take it out. But if you just open this camera up in daylight, you're going to ruin the film. Uh, second thing is the flash uses a battery that's inside the camera, but there's also a capacitor in the circuit for the flash that stores the energy from the battery. And then once you press the shutter, uh, releases the energy for the flash. It won't kill you, but if you touch that capacitor across to ground, uh, you can give yourself a nasty shock. So when opening these cameras, be careful. Don't touch that capacitor. It's basically a big plastic cylinder. You'll see it when it's in there. Um, yeah, don't touch it. <laughs> okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, thank you to Jason and Caleb for meeting up with me and doing this video with me. It was a really great time. Make sure you check their YouTube channels out, uh, Grainy Days and Bad Flashes, respectively. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I love you. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>